hearing for the town of Allensburg uh, operating and budget and warrant articles. And we'll also be covering the uh, water and sewer department uh, budget and warrant articles. Uh, my name is John Orbway. I live on Sligo Road and I'm chair of the budget committee. Uh, you might ask how you become chair. You go to the first meeting. Uh, when they say, who wants to be chair of the budget committee, you look around and everybody's got their finger on their nose. So, seriously, I, I actually volunteered to do it and I'm happy to do it. It's, it's, it's an honor. Um, the bathrooms, if you're not aware, are out the door and to the right. Um, the fire exits, you can go straight out that way where the signs are or you can follow the exits here in many ways out of the building. Um, the PTO is doing a, a donations uh, bake, not sale, um, out front. So um, have some refreshments if you like. Um, and just so that you know, the, the hearing is being videotaped, and it is it does go on uh, a private citizen puts that on YouTube. So um, just just be aware. Uh, for the process today, we will. Um, present budgets for both the town and the water and sewer department. Um, you all will ask questions or make comments. Um, when you do, come to the mic, um, state your name and your, the street you live on, make your question. If, if there's a line of people are asking for waiting to make, ask questions, please just ask one question and then go back and get in line again if, if, uh, that's, if there's a line. If there's no line, you can ask a second question. Um, after the hearing's over, we'll close it, and then the budget committee will open up our meeting, and that's the point where we will um, vote on, hopefully vote on whether or not to recommend uh, the budget or the warrant articles. So just so you know that we're, we're new to the SB2 process for the town this year, um, what will happen is, is after this hearing, um, we will have our SB2 deliberative sessions, which are basically like a town meeting, um, for the school to, uh, sorry, I think the schools is on the second. Fifth? Fifth. Okay, yeah, so, so I, I wrote it down. But the town's deliberative session is on February 2nd. It's on Saturday. It's 9 a.m. right here. Um, and then the school will be on Tuesday the 5th. And that's going to be at the town hall um, and at 6 p.m. Oh, it's here. Oh, sorry. My schedule was wrong. It will be here. But it's at 6 p.m.? Yes. Okay. Don't listen to me. Uh, SB2 session is an opportunity uh, where, like Town Hall, you can make uh, amendments to, to the basis, to all the articles, the operating budget and the warrant articles. You can't vote on it. You vote on that at the ballot afterwards. But that's just the process. So it's, it's important to come to those SB2 deliberative sessions and be heard and, and if you want influence on, um, on the various articles, that's your opportunity. So in preparation for today, um, each of the departments in the town have come to the budget committee and have presented their budgets for the year. Um, we've, we've had meetings since November um, on a weekly basis uh, before Christmas. Um, and we've been Considering those budgets, um, we've brought the budget forward today um, for for the hearing. But the next step, as I mentioned, is to vote on whether or not to recommend the budget and the articles. Um, you may see, I think you'll see on the budgets there is a uh, select board recommended or select board proposed budget, and there are slight modifications that the budget committee has uh, voted on uh, to put forward. So you'll see. You should see a column um, on where that is now. It's the bottom line budget that the, that the budget committee provides, and but we make recommendations as whether uh, a particular line item ought to be changed. And it's up to the select board to decide eventually how that's uh, so, uh, distributed. Um, and that's pretty much well. So, so today we're going to talk about the water. The a little bit different than usual. We're going to talk about Ronsford water and sewers because. Frank Roselli is uh, has another engagement and has to leave, so he's going to give a presentation on the water and sewer department, uh, 
quite a bit in one article, and then we will switch over, and uh, Denise Knowles will present the town budget in one article. So with that, I'm going to pass the mic over to Frank. Thank
the engineering firm that was with us at the time presented. <coughs> However, we had not done an increase. Something else to look at. This, this piece of paper. What it does is it's a comparison of Rollsburg what I'm sure. Two round 
guidance of sampling. Following this violation, we opted to participate in the control, corrosion control study with Wright Pierce. That's an engineering firm that helped to identify the specific water chemistry our water system must consistently maintain to optimize corrosion control. We have since developed a routine monitoring procedure and have upgraded to chemical addition process to achieve the specific water chemistry. These improvements enabled us to return to compliance with the EPA's 11 proper rule in November 2018. We've also struggled to meet EPA's acceptable limits for arsenic. The treatment process for arsenic is technically challenging. Since our last violation in October 2017, we've optimized the arsenic treatment process. We returned to compliance in April of this year and have since had no protections of arsenic in our water for three consecutive orders of sampling. Challenges exist in the wastewater facility as well. We're currently operating with an expired term permit to discharge. Although we are technically in compliance, we are awaiting EPA's mandate to update the permit. Basically, it's in, on their hands to contact us. So we're not asking for any more work, we know it's coming. Due to advances in treatment technologies, an updated permit will inevitably include more stringent requirements, which may in turn result in costly operational upgrades. As with the water side, the wastewater facility is facing an aging equipment and infrastructure. Without properly maintaining and replacing such equipment, we risk polluting the Santa Claus River, which potentially violate as well as potentially violating and costly fines from the state. With the assistance of the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services, it has become apparent that we have greatly understaffed for many years. Given the complexity of both water and sewer processes within the district and our struggles to maintain compliance, DES recommends that we increase our staff. Per this recommendation, we have added one full-time operator and one part-time operator to our staff in 2018. Lastly, we strongly encourage you to attend the Water and Sewer District's annual meeting, which will be held on March 26th. It will be at the Legion, and it is at 6.30 p.m. Right Pierce, the engineering firm will be available, the superintendent will be available, and information is power. That's about all I have. Any questions? And Larry Lock and Parker Swing. I'm curious about the household income. What does that have to do with rates? And is that just the people that are on the system and not the whole town? Steve, um, for going forward, we have questions. Please come up to the microphone so everybody can hear. Can you hear me? I heard okay. That's a good question. Um, it, yes, it is the whole town. We're not able to single out because it's a state. It's state um, information, and they don't know who's in the district and who's not, and they don't know who has sewer or water. Uh, what I will tell you is that there's some information that will probably help us. There's a revolving fund program, and in order to qualify for the revolving fund, we need to be a, a place of need. And because our rates are so low, we're in the lowest 25 percentile of the state. Um, we don't qualify for help. Now, what we're trying to do is, with, with the increase, we're gonna, what will end up happening is we'll, we'll get us into the, the standards that we need to be in so that we qualify for help, basically. Because roughly 10% of a project can be forgiven by the state under programs that are available. Did, did I answer everyone?
Yeah, the answer, you answer the question, but I'm willing to bet that uh, the town part, I'm willing to bet that uh, the town part, uh, the medium household income would be lower than the outline. I agree. I agree because you're in, you know, the district, the people that are in the district, right. absolutely. But this is the only information that we're able to gather. We can't, we can't interview those. I, I would think that the, uh, all right, you've got the poverty rate here. The poverty rate would be even greater. Again, I, I you know, I, I, I can't get those, those numbers. So it has to be the whole time whether you're on the system or not. Thank you. You're so, if I'm, uh, Celia Leopold, Washington Street, Rollinsford, if I understand correctly, the rates are going to go up about $25 a month? Roughly. So is that going to change our billing cycle, or are we going to stay on the quarterly billing cycle? At this point, we're staying on the quarterly billing cycle. Thank you. State money available. I'm uh, sorry, federal money available. And we're in the midst of a good study. Um, but that's going to take a few more months before we get all the numbers out. Any other questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Frank. I just want to make a correction. I said you called him Mike, and I walked away. I don't know why, but I know Frank has known him for a while. Um, um, one thing I didn't mention is that the, uh, the Ramos for Budget Committee is looking for a secretary to take notes at our meetings. It pays up to $11 an hour. It's a great way to get engaged uh, with the civic uh, environment. Um, it's interesting. It's fun. Um, but I just need to make that plug so that I can stop doing notes on the weekend. I'm going to pass this the floor over to uh, Dean Snowles to present the uh, town budget. Um, pay increase, um, the police chief asked for 3% for his 
police officers, and so the budget committee recommended increasing it to 3%. Um, budget committee also recommended removing $1,000 from the town hall meet, $285 to the library director's salary, which goes to being a 2% increase, and uh, so the net difference is $1,806. So the compensation is 2% for all full-time um, part-time employees. Um, also, the police chief um, faces his salary increases based on merit as well. Um, and we're also, the budget committee felt that it was important to go bring it back to the 3% to try to keep police retention. Um, it was a 24% increase in the wrong so far to salary base. The increase was to bring the members to a minimum wage behind some coverage, coverage issues. Um, any questions so far? Okay. Um, funding for the town administrator and the part-time bookkeeper, the board hired following strong recommendation. The board hired following the strong recommendation of the ad hoc committee to the town manager, town manager committee. The town administrator will streamline processes and creating, creating efficiencies. Increased demands from state and federal governments, and then the part time bookkeeper position will require to fulfill, fulfill better town administrative functions. Town administrator was appointed last week. It's Caroline Kendall, and it is contingent upon the approval of the salary and the budget they're representing. Any questions on that? Uh, there's a 33% increase in health insurance. We changed the town insurance to a, a lower level of insurance, but also this increase is due to the changing of policies that the employees are taking. So that is why we're seeing a 33% increase. Yes? Um, the town administrator Suzanne Hewitt, Nordic Lane. Just a quick question, Denise. When you say the increase from the carry, uh, do you mean that there, there are the, the overall rates have increased, or we have officers going from like single to married or single to two person? It, it was office, oh, it was any town employee who changed their, their, their plan, so that they're covered. So if they were single, they had gone to two person. It was office, oh, it was any town employee who changed their their, uh, their plan, so that they're covered. So if they were single, they may have gone to the first one or a family. It was a change in the policy in which they were taking. Okay. Um, with the uncertainty with the sewer and water, um, we increased our sewer uh, rates by 40% for both sewer and water. The only sewer is at the town hall. The rest of those buildings are on um, um, that was a recommendation of Frank um, to budget the full 40%. Um, we are also replacing um, town hall chairs in our meeting room, paint and repair the town hall portico. And Rollins Fire Department will continue with ongoing maintenance as they have been. The highway department, the equipment, the purchasing basic tools and hammer drill is a line striping machine. Um, doing your own um, projects is problem solving and resulting in cost savings to the town, roadside mowing, fresh shipping, ditching, and small, small road repair equipment. We do have a list of the projects that were completed last year and we can share that with you as well. Um, on the road plan for the second half of the uh, work for 2018, we were proposing to finish Charlotte's Farm, Harry Stratton with his car road, uh, Woods Run and River Road, Sligo Road from Woods Run to Bear Road, and that's anticipated to be $350,000. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the town not a question on this part, but I was looking back on the first page that you presented 
and you said there was an $1,800 change, and I didn't get an $1,800 change when I looked at the list that you'd given, and I couldn't figure out what the difference was. Carolyn, do you know that um, permission to um, let our town administrator speak? Is there anybody opposed?
2017, we were overly optimistic in, in the reductions we could make in that line. And in 2018, that didn't prove to be true. We needed a little more money in certain areas. Uh, welfare is, you can have a year where you don't spend any money. You can have a year where you spend three times what, what you've allotted. And, and, and by state statute, we are the final arbiters of, uh, of, uh, of welfare. There's no other magical place they can go to. They, they come to their towns and cities. So um, I think that the select board is in uh, budget reasons and it decreases this. I think they're comfortable with the recommendations.
hope that maybe the budget committee would reconsider that line, perhaps, and put them in, you know, to restore it with the idea that uh, perhaps the fire department could work with the select board this coming year and try to even up those, you know, work out a, a better salary and wage plan. Yeah, um, it is a very complicated restructure, for sure. And um, I've been working with Mark on this, and we have decided that the select board and the company Mark will be working out a different type of, or at least um, make it easier to understand pay scale for firefighters. The change in this is because they're no longer volunteers because they receive a, um, a salary of sorts. So we have to bring them up to be, they're really considered employees. And by considering them employees, by law, they require to give them minimum wage. So we need to relook at this, come up with a plan, and um, and I would I would hope that we could get the ten thousand back. And understanding that we are going to review the pay structure, and we're going to be able to come up with a plan that's easily understood by everyone. Um, So we're going to have to do the radios for the fire department. Um, I'll put a warrant article. This is the 13 radios that the police, um, fire chief is indicating that no longer be repaired. This is their lifeline to the outdoors during a fire situation. And he, he believes that he needs to have 13 radios. He also has two in his operating budget, which he'll start maintaining that going forward. So we don't have to. Caledown Budget Committee, Rollins Road. Uh, you said the select board has approved these warrant articles. You're not voting on them until the 21st. You said the select board hasn't reviewed the articles. If I said approved, I didn't mean that. Okay. That's what puzzles me, how we're supposed to approve them when you really have Well, they were finished at 9 o'clock last night. I know that. Okay. So the, um, the radios are coming as a higher organization for the fund Is there any questions on the radios? Very none. The highway department cloud truck. 165000 is coming from capital improvement reserve. There's no 2019 tax impact on this purchase. The purchase is an upcoming snow cloud. That was scheduled to be purchased in 2018, and this is recommended by the staff. I mean, maybe it's point of, it's been recommended to put it in the budget, so it's recommended by the select board at this point, I mean, maybe that's the confusion that you're, you're not. Okay. Okay. Charlie, I'm saying is that the select board has put it in their budget under the capital improvement, so it's recommended by them in that fashion. Do not that, I'm sorry? Do have no official vote? It could also be chairman of the party. Mr. Chair, Mr. That we're still trying to figure out the new system, the SP2 system, that um, we're not used to dealing with. So the last year when this presentation was made, it would have been appropriate on there. So I think it's a bit of a learning curve that we're all trying to get up to speed with. Unlike the school district that has an army of staff, we don't. So we're, we're all trying to do the best we can. So if we can just all ignore the last line and just pay attention to everything above it, I think we can probably get through all this. But we also have to understand that the court of selection accepted the CIP for 2019, which is these letters. So directly, we are supporting them. But we will not, excuse me, can you go with me, please? then the budget committee will do what after this meeting? Yeah. Was the question. I didn't hear that question. But yes, Caroline can speak on that. 
the select board approved these Warren articles in concept to bring them back. The select board approved these Warren articles in concept to bring forward to get public comment because this is our new process. It is part of the overall budget. There's an operating budget and there is capital budget, these capital improvement items. The select board did vote to bring these items forward through this process. And so this is just one step in that process. Um, so they approve of these ideas conceptually. The board will not vote to approve the warrant until a deadline of January 28th. By that time, this, the budget committee will have had to recommend or not recommend all of these warrant articles. So the budget committee here today is hearing public comment on how you all feel about these proposals from the select board, the language of which will insignificantly perhaps change between now and the time that the select board does approve them. If they are to be significantly changed by the budget committee or, or what have you, that would have to come back to the budget committee to be recommended or not recommended again. Um, so this is you know, one step in the process. And it is appropriate for us all to be reviewing these warrant articles because the select board brought them forward conceptually and they will ultimately be part of the warrant which cannot be signed until we find out whether or not the budget committee recommends them or not recommend them. Any other questions on that? Yeah. Um, so it was scheduled for purchase, purchase in 2018. <coughs> and was not purchased, so the funds remained in the capital improvement plan, if I'm not mistaken? For the truck? For the truck. Well, or were they used for another purpose, or was it not? Yeah, he, he, he moved for project to project, project depending on what is being purchased. So there is enough money for this purchase to be paid to the CIP, if that makes sense. Sometimes her projects become more of a priority over other projects. And then next year, funding the other projects once the system is off. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And so is one of the highway plow trucks going to be um, sold or gotten rid of? And if so, which one? And um, do we have enough drivers? I know in the past we've struggled to get drivers. Will this vehicle be one that we'll be able to find a driver for. Um, if no one has any objections, I will have the road agent come up. If there's any objections. I would be delighted to hear from the road agent. Mr. Chair, do you have any objections? No, okay. The truck that should be in place is a 2008 GMC 6500. Thank you, Ms. Wendell. Josh Gomez, your road agent. The truck that's being replaced in 2008 GNC, that truck was purchased and built like a big dump truck. It's overworked, underpowered, and it's according to the mechanic, mechanics that we deal with go highway and uh, is next. We had the truck ripped over. The truck is not safe for operation in the capacity it's, it, it, it's in. It's got hydraulic brakes, and we're hauling the same amount of product that the larger dump trucks are hauling in this truck in half the capacity. The truck was scheduled to be replaced in 2018, and I started and looked at the truck and said, let's give it a year, see what it's like, let's see if we can get to it. I drove the truck myself. When you come up with stop signs and stuff, you're pushing the brakes and the truck is still moving forward. It's uh, unfortunately the truck is overbuilt and uh, working much further, uh, much more capacity than it should be. We're looking at replacing that truck with a less expensive truck with four wheel drive instead of buying another big, large dump truck and using this truck for appropriate reasons. Most of the towns in Rollinson, we can use a smaller size dump truck to plow the road because the roads are not as wide 
as uh, most towns. And the use of a full size dump truck is not necessary. A full size dump truck would be $190,000. We're looking at a better way to save money and get the job done in town. Any questions on that? I hope that explains uh, what we're trying to do. This is Lorraine Hansen, 11 Watson Lane. Just had a quick question about um, whether the um, replacement of the commercial boiler, uh, whoever's doing the work, has been notified of our Peregrine report from a couple of years ago that talked about the deficiencies in the heating and cooling in the building. I'm sorry? She's asking if the um, person who is town center, right? Oh, yes. They're the ones, uh, if they're aware of our report that was done on the efficiency report, so if they're aware of the efficiency report on some of the issues that we have downstairs, and if that would solve those problems. Okay. They're not aware of the study that was done by the Okay. They are not aware of it. Um, so we will definitely make sure that they get a copy of it before any further break. That's backwards from the board What's backwards?
I mean, why would I want to see you authorize twenty or twenty-five thousand dollars? We're not going to use it anymore. Well, you're going to use it for at least another year. Why? Because it's a taking year to go. You should be in that building a year from now. Why would you want to spend money in the boiler when you're not going to need it during the summer? I mean, it's, why put any more money into a dead issue? If it is dead, you'll know money. But right now, I wouldn't, I don't think anybody should move on this article at all. This article should just stay floating until we know what we're going to do. Did you put 25 grand into your home if you're going to sell it or get rid of it next week? I don't think so. Any other comments? Suzanne Hewitt. Hello? You can move? Okay. Suzanne Hewitt, Nord Nordic Lane. Uh, just a, a comment to what uh, Sonny just said. It, um, you know, it's whether we think it's, it's more prudent to have this Warren article in place uh, so that we could, or the town could, replace the boiler uh, because, you know, to, to assume that the town. I think it's a really big assumption that the town is going to pass a $2.4 million bond or an article to build a municipal building. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but, uh, and whether it does or doesn't, there are going to be some, a period of time when the town needs to be in there. And so um, I think it's prudent to have this. The, the board doesn't have to execute it. We've had Warren articles in the past, which we did not execute because circumstances have changed. So that's the board's prerogative. But certainly the board can't spend it if it's not there. So if, if it becomes necessary and this isn't passed, they can't spend it. If it doesn't become, if it's passed and it doesn't become necessary, the board doesn't have to execute on it. Thank you. Any other questions? I just want to say I think it's prudent um, to do this because I'm only one voter, and I don't know how the rest of the community is going to vote. And if I have a home that I want to put on market, I'm going to make sure that it's up to the standards that um, the buyer expects. When I bought my house 15 years ago, I required a new furnace put in there because it was 30 years old. I'm wondering how old is the boiler in town hall? how many issues and maintenance fees we've had to put into it, oh, it's a 20 year old, sorry, and how much fees and maintenance are we going to pay, continue to pay, until we are out of there and it is sold because we don't know when a buyer will come along to buy it either. So if we don't put in this money, then we're up for all of those unknown things that may cause us to cut other lines. Anybody else? Rossett Police Cruiser, twenty-five thousand from Capital Hill Reserve Fund, thousand dollar impact in two thousand nineteen. They're leasing and unfitting um, one cruiser this year. This is a three-year um, lease option, year, and this year is leasing one of them. So you can like the lease. Lease versus purchase to help offset the high mileage that exists on these existing cruises. This is a two year request. Any questions on this? Yes. No, it's a thousand dollar impact on the 19 rate. Because it's coming out of the capital, most of it's coming out of the capital. That's for transferring that equipment from one cruiser to the other.
functions within the town, but mostly it's going to be used for the community, but it will be available for other uses if they go through the first Any questions on that? Yes, Susan. Yes. Suzanne, you were going to play. Are you saying that it costs $11,900 with... Any questions on that? Yes. Suzanne Heward, Nordic Lane. Are you saying that it costs $11,900 with uh, the entirety coming possibly from a grant, or does it cost double that with half of it coming from a, a grant? It's double. It's double it. So if the grant does not pass, it will be taxation. So the Warren article does show $23,898, or $23,800 for the purchase of the message board mm -hmm. and does not mention the grant. So that would, be on the side. that would so that would come from, like you said, taxation instead of the capital improvement plan, correct? We're not taking the whole amount out of the capital improvement plan. It would be half of it. Maybe the other half is to the grant or So does that need no. to be I'm sorry. There are no offsetting funds in CIP for this purchase. So it's either completely coming from taxation or else it may be offset by half from a grant, if received. So it says from here, from the capital and fund. And that's an error. Okay. We can add it to the list. So, so should it go more articles specify half from taxation and half from a grant, so that when we're in the voting booth, we know where our money is going? It can only say that it's going to, we can't, we have, we have applied for the grant, we haven't been notified of the grant. So you can't assume that you're going to get it. So you have to assume you're going to have taxation with the possibility of a grant. Okay, and so the, the, what's on the warrant does not say capital improvement, so that would be the correct form, and the one on there would be incorrect. Thank yes. you. Any other questions? Yes. Any other questions? So, um, on the Capital Improvement Fund, we're proposing putting 179 and 400 based on the CIP Protective Plan. This will be on the website shortly, or and it is available at the Town Hall. The 200, uh, 2018 fund balance is 334000 and the 219 beginning balance is 235774 Any questions on that one? The culvert repair replacement reserve fund, $10,000 request. The goal is the Sligo Road culverts. Any questions on that? have a number of how much is in that fund and what are you planning to um, spend out of it in the, the fund, fund? The fund? Yes. Any other questions? So, um, on the Capital Improvement Fund, we're proposing putting 179 and 400 based on the CIP Protective Plan. This will be on the website shortly, or and it is available at the Town Hall. The 200, uh, 2018 fund balance is 334000 and the 219 beginning balance is 235774 Any questions on that one? Culvert Repair Replacement Reserve Fund, $10,000 request. The goal is the Sligo Road Culverts. Any questions on that? So I guess I'm looking for clarification. We go out and solicit donations. Some of them come in with designated purposes like scholarships. If we do not spend that scholarship 
And the donor says it must go to scholarship. We had two donors this year who said we must have scholarships. Where does that money go at the end of the year if we do not have a fund such as this? Because we've only gotten it this week. From the Department of Revenue site, Caroline? Yes, that was from the Department of Revenue site. And it's the same wording except for it says, and donations shall be allowed to accumulate from year to year. And that would allow a rec committee to pay for scholarships. Our, my prime examples this year, we have three scholarships, and we had to go back to our donor and ask them if we could use their scholarship for something else because we only had two candidates apply. And heaven forbid, we didn't use that scholarship or didn't get permission to change it back to a unattended um, funds, then that scholarship would have ended up in limbo because it has a designated purpose, but all of the rent funds go back to the general fund at the end of the year the way it's currently written. So by adding and donations to accumulate your year would allow us to preserve scholarship funding and allow more kids to attend the camp free of charge. And those giving scholarships are only models for residents. Okay, so there was there was some confusion at the meeting that she presented to us this week. Um, is the the town of Ballinsbury supplies funding up front in the budget, but it's just the um, expectation is that the revenue offsets that completely. So the, the confusion was if they didn't spend all the money, does it go into their fund? And our uh, answer to that is no. It would only be anything beyond what is raised and appropriated and what is spent through the town budget. Anything above and beyond that. So I guess I'm looking for clarification. We go out and solicit donations. Some of them come in with designated purposes, like scholarships. If we do not spend that scholarship, and the donor says it must go to scholarship, we have two donors this year who said we must have scholarships. Where does that money go at the end of the year if we do not have a fund such as this? Because we've only gotten it this week, we don't have the answers to those questions, and that is why I'm saying this is in process. Okay. And hopefully we can get it for this year. No guarantees. Okay. If not, we're we'll trying. Yes. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Okay. The final screen is the Rollinswood um, Police Department Station proposal for the 219 town meeting. There is a public hearing. Monday night at the American Legion at six, or six, or six, six at six o'clock at the uh, American Legion. We hope everyone comes, bring your friends, make sure that people are well informed. This is a huge project and we want to have as much public input as possible. Is there any other questions on any of the line items within the budget? Yes, Suzanne.
currently uh, decrease uh, on our tax impact of the $1.19 from the school district. So that's important to remember as we consider how we're going to uh, act on this budget. Also, uh, with regard to tax rates, um, I updated uh, an analysis that I, I do it every year, and I think the board made it available on the website. And uh, the really interesting comparisons only start at page 17, which compares our tax rates with um, cohorts, in property valuations, cohorts of population, uh, Stratford County and then accommodation, Stratford and Milwaukee County. In all these cases, the municipal tax rate is it is in the bottom of the barrel in all of these things. And you will also see that um, there's a comment that says what in these towns are, are comparative groups at town of or city managers or administrators. And the lowest was I think one of the comparisons gave us 67% and up to 77% of town administrators. So I thought the board for their action in Carolina is a town administrator. I strongly support it. I, I would provide other adverbs. You can supply them yourself. Any synonym for the word strong, strongly, you can just put in there. I think this is something that's unnecessary. It is necessary. And no matter what happens to the budget, I believe the board really needs to work to, to make sure that we can keep a uh, town administrator and the additional administrator support necessary to make this uh, work. The only other comment, this might be a question, has to do with the, when I looked at the um, reserve funds, there's something called new equipment reserve fund, which kind of, this has been all along since I myself, there's $30,000 in there. So, and I, I, I would ask the board to consider that amount of money, and if not this year, then maybe in the future, when necessary, transfer to the CIP, or, for example, to say, I know the CIP request is initially, you can reduce it by that 30000 for the warrant article to transfer 30000 So um, that's it. Uh, really, again, yeah, thank you for all your hard work. I appreciate it. And uh, good luck to the boys. Okay, so the final thing I wanted to just discuss is um, column M, the default budget. The default budget has become SB2, so you need to understand that the default budget will, um, in the event that the budget will be passed, this is the column in which is our new budget. So, is there any questions on that? Ray? You might want to come up this way. Ray has some notes in there. I just want to make a general comment about um, we know we're now on SB2, as um, just been mentioned, we have the top budget. The biggest thing I want to say is I know before we went into SB2, I know that a number of us had concerns about the crunch time that would be felt by the staff trying to get everything done in time for these hearings. Last time, it was always close to get it done from the town meeting. I think everyone can appreciate how hard everyone's been working to get this to the wall. It's really been difficult for everyone concerned, and I commend the staff and the select board for doing the best they can under this crunch time. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on the default budget? This is not on the default budget, but it's on the I just have a question of clarification. Are we going to ask the budget committee members to speak on our behalf on whether we feel we should approve the spending for the police station town hall without hearing from us this evening? Because they're or are they going to postpone that vote? I'm just wondering what the procedure is um, because the public hearing is after this meeting. So when do they get to hear from us voters? Now or later?
also came second year, uh, 14 years ago. Um, so the total spending that I came up with for capital items is $260,300 for a tax impact of approximately 93 cents. So my question is, how did you arrive at that tax impact and spending? Understanding the tax impact or how the tax rate is calculated is extremely complicated. And we've gone around and around about it a number of times already between the select board and the budget committee. Um, and how this was calculated was a... I, I have a back of the envelope and I'm comparing that to what are actually all the factors that are involved. So the factors that are involved are essentially the total amount that we are spending, um, considering what the offsetting revenue might be. So what is the total amount of um, tax revenue we need to come by, that we need to raise, um, divided by the total valuation of all the property in Walter. So um, that's the short equation. Um, but what all those components mean and how you get to them and what those numbers are, um, you know, we've been having spreadsheet problems. So this was calculated. So the operating budget was calculated as the difference in operating budget over expenditures over last year, considering also the difference in revenue over last year, divided by the valuation. Um, that's the simple way to get to that answer. Um, the capital improvement items um, were calculated as a change over last year. So, um, I, I've already start, started to talk to Ms. Hewitt because there are other considerations about um, transfers in from reserve funds, and I'm, I'm going to double check that. So, we'll compare notes um, and, and hopefully have better information, at least by the deliberative session, hopefully sooner. Um, so, the capital improvement items equal something around $83,000 more than last year. Last year, all of the capital improvement items that we just came entire, were funded entirely from the capital improvement fund. In other words, um, there was no tax impact to those purchases except for um, a separate warrant article, which is how much should be put into the capital reserve fund. So, um, so the purchases, the five warrant articles that reference purchases, um, the net impact of them is about $83,000. Um, there's a something around $1,200 um, difference between what we put into the capital reserve fund last year and what we put into it this year. Um, there were a couple of other little differences, but that's, you know, I'm, I'm going to try not to take all day about that, but that's the, the short of it. But we will compare notes and continue to try to provide better information. So we as budget committee members received this document saying that the tax impact rate was going to be approximately a dollar um, on the capital items and 58 cents on the operating budget. So we were given the incorrect information, was that correct? No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. The, the sheet that the budget committee received um, was approved by the auditor. He happened to be in the office that day. So. I'm going to, and it was calculated by others. So I'm going to, you know, the 58 cents, I would, I, I stand behind 58 cents on the operating budget. The capital reserve items and the, you know, the, all the other Warren articles, I would like to go back and check again. Essentially, the tax impact is about three cents for every $100,000 that we spend, assuming that there is no offsetting revenue whether it be from taxation or a reserve fund. So, so this is an editorial opinion, not their piece. Um, I, I do think that there is some confusion about what the uh, tax impact is. I mean, I commend the board and, and for continuing to work on this thing. From some people, it's a, you know, this new schedule is really compressed, and all I can say is thank goodness. But it's not my blood pressure that's going up at this time of year. Uh, but nonetheless, 
to, to, to keep in mind a couple of things. One is that the municipal tax rate in the town of Rollinsburg is very low. If, if you look at it just in Stratford County, if you look at it for uh, towns that have populations between two and 3,000, and we have a population of 2,500, if you look at towns that whose property valuations are close to ours, the 10 next highest, the 10 next lowest, by all those measures, our municipal tax rate has been very, very low. So we could be grateful for that on one hand. On the other hand, it may mean that there are some things we need to do that uh, maybe, maybe we have been taking our time doing one of them is the town ministry. So, but what the other thing to keep in mind is that there is a decrease, an anticipated de decrease of $1.19 in our tax rate from the school. So this is a good year for the town, you know, if it has to play catch up a little bit, this is a good year for the town to do that. And again, that the board can consider that $30,000 when you the equipment fund if they are looking for ways to to try to decrease the taxes. I'm going to do the rest of the because my leg is hurting. Um, so, is there any? Thank you, Susan. Is there any other comments about the budget or the problem uh, or the more articles? Sunny, Sunny, go to that one.
select boards in the past never had to make, uh, that do need to happen now. There are ways that we deal with the warrants, um, not just a piece of the paper that we've been seeing going around, but accurate reporting to the state that require a uh, higher level of expertise. Um, there are responsibilities that she will have to help coordinate a lot of the uh, activities that happen day to day during the day when all three select board members are, are working. Um, uh, that happens in every time it happens. Um, an example would be, uh, and you're going to be hearing about this on Monday evening, um, and anyone who went to the public hearing, or rather the, uh, the, the uh, not hearing the um, select board meeting two weeks ago, you will see when the uh, new space needs uh, committee finally came to the select board with their recommendation, um, there wasn't a lot of coordination there. Um, that was the question for me finally was to say, okay, not is enough. This person is being asked to do all that. I don't have an exhaustive list for you. I'm sorry. I wasn't prepared that I could speak about this this morning. Um, however, um, what was very clear to this board in the last four boards that I served in now, uh, over the last four years, that there wasn't enough administrative support in the board. Um, there are responsibilities above and beyond what used to be able to happen in a 20 hour a week part time bookkeeper administrator that, that we had for decades. Uh, we don't live uh, in a time where that's possible anymore. Uh, we would be one of the last towns in Stratford County not to have women with it or manager. Uh, I think there are managers that stay in, at this point with the administrator or the manager, but we're not going to go into all the details about what the system is doing that. But um, this, the select board thought, this select board thought that the time had finally come that we needed more administrative support. Now, that's not to say that the board still doesn't have responsibilities. Both by statute and by practice, we do, and we will continue to have those responsibilities. But there are there are times when you're dealing with, say, there's a new permitting process for wastewater. I don't want to bore you all, but yeah, there are times when it is advantageous to have a paid staff member sitting at that table versus a volunteer. We have been we have been having a volunteer attend some of the reports, and we're very grateful that he's been attending those meetings. But we certainly can't make any decisions based for the town. Um, and if he can't make it, he can't make it. He's a volunteer. So we we have been operating for for decades uh, in the spirit of volunteerism in this town, and that is commendable. But I think Mr. Ordway made the announcement at the beginning of this meeting. They've been looking for a uh, a uh, note taker, a secretary, for weeks, for months. We want to pay that person, but oh, in essence, they're like volunteers. You're not making a you pay for $1 an hour. And none of those famous volunteers were always asked to find every time the select board wants to do something, they have to step forward. So um, I'm hoping none of the people here today will step forward and be that a volunteer. But the day and time of depending on volunteers all the time to offset what the select board can do, the days are over. And that's why the select board moves forward. And I will be happy to present something better, and we can send it out on, on, on the website. So I do apologize for not having to present it here this morning, but um, the time has been long over here. So but thank you for the question. And I hope that I didn't fumble too much. Lucy will also try to address your question. Um, my responsibilities have always been um, bookkeeping, all of the money that flows through the town, entering it into the system, and making, um, providing all the materials so that they can pass the financial audit. Um, I also am the first line of where people come to say, can I do this with my property? Um, there are a lot of things like that that are not going to immediately change. What's changing is that the board has changed over the last few years. And for many years, we've had board members who are retired and spent significant time in town hall providing essential functions like assessing and budget preparation. Um, and 
now we have a board that works full time, and my job as town administrator relative to that is to keep the town on track with, in a perfect world, making sure we're prepared for these meetings and getting the budget prepared for the board to consider, um, revising that as appropriate and sending it off to the budget committee, making sure that our warrant passes legal muster with the Department of Revenue and the administration, making sure that the town has um, policies that will um, protect us from liability, consulting with other agencies and other managers to make sure that um, we are, um, we have policies in place, that we are meeting the criteria that we are supposed to with all the requirements that are set upon us by state and federal government, for example, new stormwater um, regulations because we are an MS4 community, which means that we have storm drains that feed into um, a major river that goes into the ocean. So we're facing new regulations about that. There are tons of meetings about what that means and what our role is with that. There, there are so many things like that that this town has faced which are relatively new in combination with the change in board that doesn't allow for that level of time and that level of expertise. So for the short term, not very much has changed because I still have to do all the bookkeeping and answer the public's questions when they want to confirm a meeting time or when they want to you know, know what's going on you know, in, in one way or another. Um, another essential function which is not really prop up not really otherwise addressed is sharing information between the public and the department heads and between department heads and from the select board to department heads because otherwise with nobody in the town office during the day there is no conduit of information and nobody knows what's going on and then the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing and it just creates a lot of confusion so the goal with this as step one is to recognize that these are a lot of functions that I have already done. There will be increased functions because of this change in board and change in title, but it's somebody to have you know, their eye on the big picture for the town to make sure that we are paying attention to monthly, quarterly, and annual cycles um, regarding all the regulations that we have to adhere to. So the additional support will provide me extra time so that I can meet those requirements better. Okay, so I guess the final um, business, I'm sorry, go ahead. Come on up.
concerns about the budget, uh, it may be wise to consider uh, innovative uh, ways to use, to accumulate additional revenues which don't necessarily uh, impact uh, the, uh, the bottom line budget. But thank you for your time and attention. Okay, anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the final, um, the final comment is that um, Monday night is the public hearing and the project that is being proposed is being proposed as a um, bond. So if you have any questions on the bond today, we will try to help you. And if you don't have the answer today, we'll have it for you on Monday. But we want to make sure that you understand that it is because this hearing counts as one, this meeting counts as a, one of the bond hearings. So we make sure that you understand the project that is being proposed is for a bond. Is there any, anybody have any questions on that? Suzanne? Hello, Suzanne. I'm a little confused. Um, I assume that I've, I've held all my, or told all my comments about the two different bond issues on Monday. Is that not correct? Uh, our understanding was that because we spoke of this project at this meeting today, not the public hearing, but this meeting, that we had to make sure that they knew that it was a bond. And it is mentioned in this meeting that we are proposing to uh, fund this project by a bond. Is it appropriate, however? that I should hold my comments and questions since we're not doing that. On the project, yes. Well, no. 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 Well, as we mentioned earlier, we're probably going to have to have a budget committee meeting subsequent to today's to review um, that one article. But if you have comments um, now, while there are people here, uh, I think they're... Well, okay, it's not prepared. I would have been better prepared on, on Monday. I would say overall, my comment is that um, I feel, if I were making a decision, I don't have sufficient data in order to make a good decision about this. And if if I were uh, as a CEO, as a manager, as a whatever, uh, faced with this, this is not going to be an exhaustive list because again, I'm not fully prepared. But uh, I would first of all want to know what goals we are trying to. Uh, what, what are the needs of the police and what are the needs of the municipal building? As a list, I mean, not, not just you know somebody's verbally saying something. This should be part of a full study plan and analysis. And maybe it exists, and I just haven't stumbled upon it. I don't know, and I'm sorry, I haven't. But there should be something somewhere that says, okay, this, these are the current deficiencies with regard to the police. These are the current deficiencies with regard to the town, and uh, the, which is leading us to this other thing. Having said that, then what what are the um, are, what are the other men? ways in which we might address those said deficiencies. Um, and also what I mean the two point four million dollar bond as far as I know is for the building alone. There are other costs associated. There's all the planning costs, there's all the costs of trying to go out to bond and I mean by cost I mean human resources, people resources. Who is the, who would be the project manager? How would we line up resources in order to manage all of this? Um, what are the carrying costs? I mean because you know, if you're going from building to building, there you're you're not going to be all you know you know whatever that which is we used to go like this. You know, we're not going to just all of a sudden be in the town hall one day and then be in the building another day. So there are lead costs, there are setup costs, there are costs for carrying the building while we are in the process of moving, and there are maybe lesser carrying costs while we're trying to figure out what happens to the building. And I guess I just. I would expect to see all of this as data. There, there are the costs associated with what is the bond, what is all the possible cost of the bonding, um, you know, $2.4 million, what are the current rates available, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there's, 
It's just a lot, and I guess I just don't see any of that. So that's my overriding comment about that part of it. Ron Thomas, hello, what's your name? I think it's reprehensible if you're going to call this a meeting or a bond hearing to say that we're not going to tell you anything about it. We're not going to give you any of the details. We're not going to give you any of the comparisons. It's everybody else's job to come up with the questions that they made out that we were giving them. No information. We had to call in this a meeting as a bond hearing. So there was a facility assessment done on that building in 2015 um, under your watch, Suzanne. Um, that study still exists out online, so it's, I'm sure it's available at um, Town Hall. Um, there is some information on the back of um, the gym on the plans um, and some of the costs. Um, and I'm sure Bob would be happy to come up and talk a little bit about that. Um, but there is data out there. Um, and there will be more data on um, the money at the money meeting. Um, we have bond rates, bond to provide bond, bond rates. Um, but you know, we really we really want to hear your input about you know whether you think that this project is happening and whether we should move forward. Um, that's it.
my question to this board. And it says for both facilities, bonded at 30 years, 85,000 each year. Okay. And it says interest decreased nearly would be $68,000. Is that the total amount? Is that the um, every year we would be paying out $68,000? I do not see a schedule that shows me how the bond decreases yearly. So those are just, well, I don't see that on the table in the back. Um, so, like the people before me have said, there's a lot of questions that I have as a community member, and I'm also in the Water and Sewer District, and I'm seeing a spike in my water. And this makes it a financial hardship on a family that is working, and I would really like the Budget Committee to consider that, just like the other things that were brought up, like what is the town looking at um, administration-wise. Is this plan, I'm looking at it, and I see dimensions, but I don't see capacity rates. Are we building a town hall where we could actually have a meeting that would fit the whole town? Or are we going to still have to use this facility or the Legion to have community events? These are some questions that I feel like we've rushed over, glazed over, that need to be addressed. And there are tons and tons of questions that I have that I would personally like to see somebody in the town address so I can make an informed decision. I know the Space Needs Committee has worked very hard to put together a plan, but the plan is constantly evolving. And I don't have the concrete answers that I'm looking for. So I would suggest that maybe if this board is going to vote on it, they either provide some of the answers to find out where we can get them, or postpone it until we can um, get to a point where everybody's comfortable with voting. So, just to be clear, two things. I support the plan going forward. In other words, gathering more data. I don't support a bond on right now. So, because I, I just don't think we have sufficient data. I'm fully aware of the space needs that we did three or four years ago. But it was three or four years ago. And it was not an engineering study of town hall. So, one of the other things that I think it would be interesting for us to know is a, a true building engineering study in town hall to see what it would cost us to bring town hall into a more efficient use. And if it turns out to be less than $2.4 million, and actually the, the $2.4 million is not going to be the total project cost because that's just the building. So, so, so it's just, you know, it's just, yeah, you know, we, we don't have, we have option A, we don't have option B, uh, to say nothing about option C. So I think option, a good option B would be Let's take a look at a town hall from um, you know, an engineering or architectural engineer or whatever point of view to see what it would cost to make town hall um, um, be more amenable to the town administrative facilities and to the police station.
that cell phone is going to that same thing right now where they built a police department that accommodates just the police and then they're trying to figure out what to do with the people, the few people left in the town hall. Um, so, although it was attractive, um, at a lower rate to do this in the police department, I supported um, doing both buildings. Um, I know we've made significant investments in the town hall. Um, I don't have the exact number, maybe Ed knows that number, but I, I thought it was, you know, already we put a million plus dollars into it. Um, and, you know, it still needs significantly more work. Please review the assessment of that building. Um, it is online um, on, on Facebook, well, for the Hanford Happenings, I share that. Um, but I'm sure you can get it at Town Hall as well. Um, it did talk a lot about the deficiencies in the building, the space um, issues, um, and obviously maintenance issues.
We have several doors and whatnot that uh, we can't uh, lock properly because, again, it's pushing the doors up, the door jams up, and whatnot. In the last 20 years that we've been down there, we've actually had to jackhammer portions of our floor because it actually raised portions of our floor several inches. The last time we did that was, I think it was three years ago, and there was another section of the PD downstairs, so we're going to have to do that probably within another year or two, because the floor has raised so high that when you open the door, it catches on the floor. That, that was the, the main reason for, for looking at some other alternative for, for, for the police department to get out of the basement. Since the, the, the study was done, we looked at a number of alternative sites, and um, one being the property of the town owns up the middle of the scuffle. You know, it's, I think 26 or 27 acres out there, something like that. And we just deemed that that was just too far off the beaten path. We would have to spend millions and millions of dollars just to put the roadway in just to get us out there. So we decided that wasn't a, a good spot for us. We decided, uh, and I had always recommended the Silver Street site, one, because the town doesn't have to pay for their property, for their own property. And originally the plan was to go forward with just a police department standalone facility by itself. And I felt that the Silver Street uh, site was, was adequate um, for our needs. Uh, it's more centrally located to the entire town as opposed to being stuck on, on one end of the town. You know, the, the days of the majority of the folks coming to the police department to report a crime are, are, are slim to none. Uh, most of the time we're going out to your location um, to do that. But the problem we ran into is then the question was what do we do with the, the town hall building? Well, the town hall building still has many problems other than just the water infiltration in the basement. You know, a good portion of the town hall doesn't have adequate insulation. The windows aren't energy efficient. Um, there's no room upstairs for growth. And actually, if you look at some of the walls upstairs, you can see where, where we're actually pushing up the upstairs because there's a number of cracks and number of areas upstairs as well. So at some point, whether the police department leaves by itself or we take the town hall with us, um, somebody at some point needs to do something with, with the town hall. Take care of that. Um, there, there was that step that was put up that the town hired the, well, the contractor to come in and take a look at all the town facilities, and it is online to address the issue with the current town hall in its current, the current state. Um, our insurance company came in, did an evaluation of the police department, uh, Primex study, that, that I believe might be available on our website as well. You can take a look at that. So what we did is uh, last year, even last year, we put out an RFP, a request for proposal, uh, based upon uh, design that I had for the police department only. We had, uh, I think it was five companies, five or six companies that came and gave us a price, and um, you know, like I said, that was for, for the police department only, and it ranged anywhere between 1.2 million and up. We had one of the companies that we narrowed down to two, two companies. One was a modular build, and another company does the uh, cement wall build, similar to what we just did the farming station. And looking at the information provided, it appeared to be that the cement wall building that we had proposed was going to be more energy efficient, and it would last a lot longer than having a standard two by six building. These folks claim that it was in a hurricane. Um, so we went with their recommendation, and they were at the, at the, at the bottom end of the, of the price scale as well. So we thought we were getting some value, value for the buck by going with this company. We reached out to the bond bank, and for the police department, if you, if you look at the, the two options page that they prepared for the select board and the, the uh, safety committee, Option one was just for a police building only. If you don't have this copy, you know, or copies of the bond information there at the back table right there. Option one was for police facility only, and the, uh, a fixed cost for the building was 1,169,327.48. And you got a contingency equipment and furnishings, and I just rounded up to 1.5 million. That is a high figure. I don't anticipate that we'll spend all the 1.5 million, but as you know, when working with 
contract just today. It seems like they always find something after the fact to, to, uh, to, to add to the product. So I want to make sure that we don't run into the problem that we ran into back in 1998 in the town hall where X amount of money was earmarked for the building, but it actually cost this much to work profitable. So this, this money that we've earmarked for both, both options will clearly take care of building the building correctly and if any contingencies pop up. Under option number one for police department only, the bond rate would be no more than $50,000 per year for 30 years. And just as, as a note, that historically, back in 1998, the town spent $50,000 for bond for, I think it was 18 years, 17 or 18 years, for the town hall renovation back, starting back in 1998. The interest would start at approximately $32,000 per year, and then over the 30 years, it all obviously decreased. And it was mentioned about the Homeland Security grants. We are eligible to receive up to $40,000 in money for an emergency operations center. What that means, the Homeland Security folks would pay for, for tables, chairs, for the conference room, additional phone lines, computers, monitors, and whatnot. Um, the, the, the room that we mark as the emergency operations center for the town is also the conference room. The conference room is, is, is designed to be a multi-purpose room and available to the general public to use as well. We designed that way so that uh, it could be used by folks other than just the police department. Under option number two, which includes the town hall facility, the building itself is $1,991,079.41. And that is a contingency and equipment and furnishings for, for both floors to bring it to $2,391,779.44. Originally, when I contacted the bond bank, I, I, I told them $2.5 million, not knowing that it would come out a little bit less. So actually, as we go through this process, and if it is approved, these numbers for the interest rate in the bond, the figures could actually come down just a little bit. Because, again, I, as I said, 1.5 million for option one, 2.5 million for option number two. The numbers are just a little bit high. And we did that, I, I did that purposely just to make sure there was enough money to get to cover everything. It's my understanding that we have set aside roughly over $100,000 that should be in the CLP possibly for town hall, police department, whatever. That money could be applied towards this project, whether just the police leave, or if you want to have the town hall remain upstairs, uh, that money could be used to fix it there for We do know that in, in the coming years that we have some uh, issues with our HVA system, HVAC system, We've actually replaced one unit last year. Um, they're all at their max life at this point, and we've got another four units that's going to be replaced. That's two for upstairs at the town hall level, two for downstairs. And I did notice on the slide earlier, I mentioned that the boiler was 20 years old. The boiler was actually about 30, 35 years old, because the boiler during the renovation was not replaced. They kept the, the old boiler during the renovation, and that certainly uh, is in need of replacement. Sometime in the very near future. So, but the question is this: I, I suppose, folks, that um, what happens to the town hall if the police leave? Is it really worth maintaining the great big white building for a couple of employees for four hours a day? So, and that, that's the question you folks need to need to decide. Obviously, with a new building. I know there's been some concern about putting town hall on the second floor. Almost essentially now, the, the town level is actually on the second floor. By the time you walk up the stairs to get to where they are now, uh, they are actually on, almost on the second floor. So, I, that, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's really not an issue. Um, the new building will have a proper elevator, a proper lobby to walk into, and proper stairs to get up to the second floor, as opposed to the lift that we have now currently in the town hall. So you're going to have a proper building that's going to be more energy efficient. Uh, it's, it's estimated, and the folks who speak, uh, the, 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 the design the building, will speak more about this Monday night, but the building will be certainly more efficient than, than what we currently have now. We now know, like, the, like I said, the, the, the current building does not have insulation in some parts of the second floor upstairs, some parts of the floor downstairs, 
But like the, the windows, some of the windows don't open. If you open them, you have to stand on them to get them closed. Uh, some of them don't have screens. So I will entertain any questions that you may have. On the plan, there's a meeting room that's within the police department. Is that for police purposes only? Would it be available? To that is a community room. If you look at the design, the design is that it has a separate entrance. So budget committee, town hall, recreation committee, boy scouts, real scouts, whatever, would be able to use that, that room onto the side. And it's been designed so it has its own uh, set of uh, bathrooms. And, uh, um, and that you would have access to that room without having to go through the PD to get to that room. Thank you. Now, I, I will look. The, the drawings for the town hall floor uh, are not set in stone. Um, I just based, I, I did that drawing based on the number of current staff that we have upstairs there. However, it would be up to the, the select board to decide if they want to have a room for this person, this person, this person. Those rooms can be enlarged, they can be, can, can be uh, made a little bit smaller depending on what the needs are. But uh, for the purposes of getting it uh, to this point, uh, we had the I designed enough rooms, I think, that will satisfy everybody. Now, if we're looking at talking about, we want to have a, a conference room that is uh, a meeting room that is large enough, it can certainly be done on the second floor of the new facility. Okay. Bob, how many um, hours do the police use their current um, facility? How many in there, how many hours a day, and how many people are in there for how many hours a day? Well, we use the building 24 hours a day. Uh, we're not always in the building 24 hours a day, because uh, we're on a patrol and we don't have any building. However, having said that, you know, you still need to have a detention room, you still need to have a booking room, regardless if you're arresting one person or 100 folks a year. You still need to have a lot office for the chief, the sergeant, the patrolman, bathrooms, the conference room. The only time we have someone in the building on a regular basis is usually during the daytime when we have the administrative staff meeting the front door for myself or the lieutenant over there and when I'm on patrol. But during the nighttime, for the most part, the Russian patrol in the neighborhood as opposed to being in the building. Thank you. So you oh. um, I'm not sure if you can answer this. But my understanding is that the town hall is currently on the National Register of Historic Places. Therefore, there are some restrictions into what it could be used for in the future. Or it cannot be demolished without a process. Is that, does anybody know? I, I don't know. I, 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 I do have to know the answer to that question. Um, if, if you, if you, unless money, unless you have received grant money from uh, some of the historic uh, places that, that grant matching funds and whatnot, if, if you do that, then you have to, um, they may say, the first, if, if we did receive money for, to replace the roof from, from, from the historic uh, foundation, then we would have to wait until the roof life ended before we could do something else with the building. If we have received no grants from, because we're a National Historically Registered Building, if we, if we receive no grants for that, then we can do anything we want to, including take it down. So, I've not heard any plans of what the future of the town hall would be, besides possibly selling it. Is that the path that we're looking at? I'm opposed to uh, selling it to a developer who's going to put apartments in there and then we're going to pay for it forever. So who do you suggest to be selling I would tear it down. I know a lot of people don't like that. This is a white element. Whatever it is. It's going to cost us a lot of money to get the owners of it are at the owners of the school.
Suzanne Huey. Again, I, feel, I, I thought this was happening Monday, so I, so I feel like I'm, I'm yes. unprepared. And, uh, so I have a, and I'm sorry that I didn't look at all of these things, because I, I thought it was going to be Monday. But Monday but, is Monday as well. Well, and then I'm told that this is the time to make some comments. So, I, so now I'm like this and that. So again, I, two things. First, I support this project going forward as far as collecting more information. I think it's important. I just don't think we have sufficient information. Even with this little piece here. We need to know, we, we need to have some, instead of this, this. I mean, so it's just, just as a form of comparison. I think it would be helpful to know how much it would cost to, to bring Town Hall into to make it viable. Because I agree with that, Jansen. Right now, it's a white elephant. And I know of all those headaches. We, we, I've dealt with them with Duchamp, with, with everybody who works in Town Hall. But that doesn't mean it can't be, um, you know, rehabilitated. It costs money, but it may not cost $2.4 or $2.5 million. And so, again, I support continuing to work on this thing. I just don't think we're there yet. And I also have reservations about the site. Because, you know, we can say, yes, it's going to be fine, it'll be fine, but as soon as you have a new need that we can't anticipate. We don't know what they are, right? We don't know what's going to happen to us in the future. We don't know if we're going to grow. We have a lot of unused land out there uh, without buildings on it. And I just feel that it's a, if there's little room to grow in that space if we have both police and, and municipal there. So again, I apologize for not having like, brought myself up to speed on this. I thought it was Monday night. Um, that's it. And 
negatives. Um, we received three negative, and the rest were, uh, were, were positive. However, that survey only indicated that the police were for police pits. Okay, not to be to be fair. Um, since then, this project has has moved into town hall and police department for that space. The original thought was if we went to Silver Street, the building had to look residential in nature, not look like a commercial building stuck in the middle of a residential area. So the design of the made so that it actually looks like a two-story house for the most part. Uh, parking right now uh, is 32 spaces. I should say a minimum of 32 spaces. It could be more. Could be put some more. Probably that question you want to Silver Street. Uh, I think the town got a really short day early down when they did buy that lot that was available for us to buy next to that lot. I personally are against a two-story building. I'd like to see it all on one floor, just for the ADA purposes only. People can get out of the building, no questions asked, regardless of what, what their handicaps may be. Uh, I think there's a couple of other spots that the town still owns land in the vicinity, but we have to swap the land around different town groups who come. So, I mean, is this one issue going to be strictly for this one type of building on this one lot? Or are we going to have choices for possibly something else? Bob, I Because at the last public hearing, it was recommended to have a phase step. Right. It was a, at the public hearing, they would say we at least need a five acre lot. So, Bob had contacted a resident who owns property here and is trying to do some kind of a negotiation, it fell through. I don't believe the town owns five acres of buildable land that we could put on, uh, we could put a building on. There are, there are lots out there, but nothing's for sale. So we did, we did investigate purchasing, purchasing land in a bigger lot because there were also, uh, the other thing that they had mentioned was the police, fire, and town administration complex, which would be definitely five plus acres. But there isn't anything for state or for, we weren't able to come to an agreement, or uh, the family were being able to come to an agreement on another thing that we had discussed. And that's all. Okay. On that. One would be is we could go to the west side of the fire station, take the entire area all the way up to the old town cemetery, that would mean losing the ball court. Cemetery land, right? But on the same token, if a cemetery requires so much land, we could give them Silver Street. This, to me, I think there's a lot of other things that we could do. Go so across the street from the fire station where the monument is and the two cannons. Take that piece of property all the way up to where we had to, to the road that goes into the cemetery. There again, we'll have to do some swapping with land. Take the monument, move it across the street to the west side of the fire station. If you should be able to run sewers straight down the tie into on main, the whole buildings, you would eliminate the septic system, and yet you would still maintain the monument that I think needs to be maintained. It's a lot of loose ends. I'd, I'd like to see this get narrowed down and then given choices. This is what we can do here, this is what we can do there. Not just, we got to get this. But as far as the, the old town hall, I sat in that room with the engineer. He said they could cure the water problem. I'm the only one that stood up and said, it. you can't. It's not the way you're going to do it. So we went through a project that was over a million and we had less than a million to pay for it. That's a big issue. We try to address it, but there's going to be cost overruns. How are we going to handle it? Who's going to get what? What are we not going to do? You've got way too many loose ends and unanswered questions for me to say yes. I, I put my name on that project. 
But to get rid of that white elephant, yes. I would sell it or give it. But if you give it to the right people, they can turn it into elderly housing. You now get taxable products. Thank you. So, Sonny asked a, uh, a really good question that I don't think was answered, and that is the, the quote that we have is on the, was made with that site in mind, and the amount of development and whatnot that had to be done. Is that not correct? And if we had another site, there would be some other, the cost may not be the same. Is that, is that correct? The quotes that have been quoted to us by the construction company are, are a fixed price for that building, regardless of where it goes, or how much your time you're adding it. It's town water and septic. It would be less if you didn't have septic. But that's a fixed cost for the building, regardless of where you put the building. But the, it could be a possible change. You had a bigger lot, you have it all on one floor, so you have to elevate the cost. That would be the only thing. I mean, building floors. Right. Right. If everything was on one floor, floor, right, it would not have the expense of the other shaft. But this was a design build feature as opposed to hiring an architect for forty, fifty thousand dollars coming up with that and then putting it up to bid. This is a design build feature with a map with a uh, uh, not to exceed price. And the bill is going to explain that more. Than once. to adjourn. Okay, with that, uh, we'll close the public hearing uh, on the town budget and uh, two of our budgets. Uh, public order. Uh, we, continue, we continue the school district public hearing on the budget and we will close the hearing. And right. so now we'll open and close it. We did that in our last meeting.